let's have a look at real solutions now. You've probably seen already the prime example of an ideal solution that actually involves, um, I don't want to say real, so existing um, liquids, and that would be benzene and toluene because they're so structurally, <clears throat> excuse me, so structurally similar. Their forces of intermolecular forces are quite similar. A to B, B to B, and A to A. And that's, that's the key to uh, existing liquids behaving as an ideal solution. But right now I want to show you real solutions or review with you real solutions. And so again, um, I'm not writing everything down here so you will have to listen, but it is um, real solutions. These are binary liquid solutions. Uh, two liquids, and we will make, um, how about this one, we'll make this one um, the higher, the more volatile. <laughs> so let's make, this is A, so this one would be B. <clears throat> so that's the pure vapor pressure of, of B. Um, that is the vapor pressure above pure liquid B. So again, that's a table value because what's uh, constant here in this presentation is temperature. And um, we'll make this one lower vapor pressure. So that would be higher boiling point when the mole fraction of A is 1, makes sense that that's the pure. Now, before you jump too quickly to adding Raoul's lines, this is real solution. And a real solution, uh, <coughs> excuse me, does not um, obey, as they say, Raoul's law. Rather, we draw it in as dashed line we can do that for, I mean, if it's misbehaving, it's misbehaving. So we'll do a dashed line for um, <clears throat> Dalton's law of partial pressures as well. I'm sure it's not obeying it either. There are two kinds of real solutions. Because there are two kinds of uh, deviants from ideal. Sounds kind of funny that like they are deviant behavior solutions, but in fact, that's um, really what the labels imply. So um, you guessed it, the real observations either lie above in all three lines or below in all three lines. So we don't have a mixture that wouldn't really make any sense the way that these are mutually related. So um, let's sketch the real solution behavior for these two liquids in which A is the higher boiling point um, and let's see will we make them negative or positive deviating behavior um, oh I know what we can do let's let's let our clue um, to whether it's above or, or below come from the observed behavior of their boiling point diagram. So I want to make sure I fit this on. How far can I go to, to here? That'll do it. Let's say that this is what we know about. Now instead of pressure mole fraction, this is a temperature mole fraction. And we said that since A has the lower um, vapor pressure here, it's not as volatile. So that means that A would have a higher boiling temperature. So TB, and this is for A. Then, and let's exaggerate it, we will put B down here. Okay?
a T boiling for B. This is T boiling for A. So TBB, if you like. Um, and an ideal, again, I'm not going to even put it in with a dashed line, ideal would give us just that little um, two-phase two region in between here. And with space between two lines, but necessarily converging to a point at both ends. And instead, we can make either a minimum or a maximum boiling point azeotrope. And it's it doesn't really matter whether we put it min or max in this example, let's choose. So let's do a minimum boiling point azeotrope. And the minimum can be anywhere along here. It does not have to be in the middle. So I'm going to make it here. So then I have what looks almost like the ideal um, two-phase region between two liquids on both sides. Now, this is telling me that the boiling point, they're all um, below a line that would have joined them. So it seems like, in terms of forces, my choices are A, 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 B, B, B. It looks like AB forces are relatively strong. Uh, pardon me, relatively weak. No, it's one or the other. No, um, relatively weak because the solution is actually boiling, boiling at a lower temperature than either of the two liquids. Right? Okay. Sorry about that. You have to um, <clears throat> keep pace with the thought. Make sure everything makes sense. Okay, so they're relatively weak. Um, and so, if they're boiling, the solution is boiling at a relatively lower temperature, then what does that say about the vapor pressure? Do we have, because these have to go together, do I have a real solution where the vapor pressures are larger than predicted all the way or lower than predicted? It has a lower boiling point for the solution, so it seems relatively easier to break apart the AB forces. Mm -hmm. And so if it boils at a lower temperature, I think we can say that, and we just do it, if, if I have a thick region here and a minimum region, I want to complement that over here. Um, I mean between these two lines, sorry. So that their sum is going to give me the total. Okay. So we have said a lot here, we haven't collected a lot in notes, um, but this AB binary real solution, binary liquid real solution, is an example of um, positive deviating behavior from Rao's law. positive deviations from actually both Rowe's law of partial pressures and Dalton's law of uh, Rowe's law of, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, what else can we say <clears throat> about this one? They, the liquids form a minimum boiling point 
azeotrope. Oops, I recorded it. This way. And uh, can I see that? Yeah, right here. So be careful when you label, like if you're asked to point out what's the azeotropic temperature, don't point to this, okay? That's neither a temperature nor a composition. That is a point, and a point has an xy coordinate. So you're either asked for this, or this, or both, but, okay? <laughs> so you can identify the azeotropic point, yes, but this is, this is the minimum boiling um, azeotropic temperature And this is the azeotropic composition. There's different ways you can say that. You can say that that's the composition of the azeotrope. And um, it looks to be about, you know, 0.7, maybe? Um, <clears throat> 0.7 mole fraction A or 0.3 mole fraction B. The liquids form a minimum boiling point azeotrope. Um, it comes down to relatively weak AB forces uh, within the context of the three possible ones. If I knew what the liquids were, I could dive into that a bit deeper, drill down and say why they are weak. And always my choices are the three van der Waals, which you should be able to um, explain, whether it's dipole-dipole, you know the list. If, if you have forgotten it, again, a good place to look is in your first year book, or first year book online. Um, what else do we want to say about this? Oh, I know what I wanted to mention back here. Um, this, we'll do more on this, but uh, this is the liquid. This is liquid plus vapor. And this is the vapor region phase. And um, again, let's pick a point where it's really visible, like maybe right here. It's going to do a solid line down. And this one, and this one. So this, uh, the y value corresponding to this point going over would be my total pressure. Um, and it's um, again, it's a real solution, so they're not going to add nicely, but this uh, this one and this one added together is about equal to that, but this is my partial pressure of B above this real solution of this composition in the liquid, and this is the partial pressure of A above a solution of this composition in the liquid. Now, the... Um, let me just grab back what we did. Remember this one? The ideal solutions with all these formulas on it. So can I do that here? The answer is no. Right? Because these are not straight lines. And so even for a real solution, there are parts that behave rather ideally. And I think you can kind of see that, even though I didn't do that intentionally. I was lucky. Is that, see this region here? where it's rather linear, and actually this one extends for uh, quite a while. So where it does overlap with predicted ideal behavior, then certainly um, those formulas would apply there. But um, usually we call those regions areas where Henry's Law applies. And I'll let you look up Henry's Law if you're interested. Um, it is not final exam material in 2015, but you can think of it as, I'm just flipping back in the book to where it's listed, you can think of it as um, an area of the phase diagram that behaves ideally because I can make a, an initial straight line out of it. I can't find it at the moment, um, but you will.
just look really quickly. It's strange, I don't see it at the moment. Um, but anyway, it's not exam material, and so you'll see, you won't see it in the ideal, obviously, it's just for real solutions, but that's, it's the initial line that lines up with my initial um, linear portion of these curves. And it, the formula looks uh, quite similar to Raoult's law, except instead of it being a mole fraction of the pure, because you see it's not in line with the pure, it is in line with what's called Henry's constant. Yeah. And so you can predict the vapor, the partial pressure is equal to the mole fraction in the liquid multiplied by Henry's constant, and the same thing here. So if I were to extend those lines, I can see what Henry's constant would be for each of those gases. Anyway, Henry's constant, not exam material in 2015, okay? What I would like to do is take a closer look at this one and maybe redraw it a little bit, a little bit bigger for focus. Um, and actually, before I do that, let me bring it back for one second. So can I just show you on here? Um, I won't actually draw it in, but you would have the other possibility is a maximum boiling point azeotrope where you would have one lobe like this and the other lobe like that. And that would be where this diagram would correspond to everything falling below what's predicted. Okay, let's take a closer look at this. I'm gonna draw it in pink. This was low, high, and um, a minimum. Make sure you're not above, eh? Yeah. Something like that here. <laughs> and this was boiling or B pure. And this is boiling <clears throat> for A. Good. So let's imagine we have a solution of this concentration on the bench, and then we heat it up. heat it up. What is going on as we heat it? What are we seeing? Well, we can make some um, labels here. F G H and I, how about that? <clears throat> and we're heating in this direction. So I'll let you take maybe some notes and I'll just talk about what's going on. It is a closed system. Constant. Uh, pardon me, it's not closed because I would be traveling differently on the phase diagram. It's, it's open because I have boiling, and it's at a constant um, atmospheric pressure. So just think of that literally on the stove at this composition, and I'm heating it, so this is all liquid, and that's all vapor, and inside here I have liquid plus vapor. So when I heat it through F, even at point F, it's all liquid, but it's just hotter liquid. And then when I reach point G, so point G, what I'm really referring to is the temperature. When I heat to the temperature that corresponds to G, I will see my first drop of vapor. And 
if I want to know the composition of that vapor, then I will draw a tie line over to the vapor line. See, this is the liquid line because it borders the liquid phase. And this is the vapor line because it borders the vapor phase. So at that first point, G, I draw a tie line. This is going to get messy. Over, straight over, to where I cut the vapor. And I, if I come down here, then I see that while this guy here is the composition of the liquid in the flask, when I heat that composition up and I get that first drop of vapor and I use my tie line to go straight over horizontally until I hit the vapor, um, and then I come down and I see this is the composition of the vapor. Isn't that neat? I'll say it again. <laughs> so I have this composition in my flask heat it up until I see the first sign of vapor at this temperature. And that vapor, I know, is richer in the lower boiling liquid. Note I didn't say it's richer in B, which is the lower boiling of these two liquids, because it's actually richer in this lower boiling point liquid, which are the two liquids here that are relevant. Yeah, it's neat, isn't it? it was, OK, so. Well, let's back up. I have this composition of A and B in the flask. Miscible. Lovely. Room temperature. Heat it up, heat it up, heat it up. Through F. Nothing happening. At G, my first drop of vapor at this temperature. Lovely. It's starting to boil. And that vapor, like equilibrium vapor, so like a reflux boil. And that vapor has the composition of this. So you see that this is the composition of the liquid, that's the composition of the vapor, right? And therefore, yes, the vapor is richer in this, the lower boiling point liquid, relative to this liquid. These are my two liquids in question. It's cool, eh? So now if I keep heating it, I'll reach a temperature again where I have the last drop of liquid and see how I've, I've reached the vapor line so I can't, I'm not drawing a tie line um, to the vapor because I'm here and with further heating I'm just heating up the vapor. If, if, if it was, yeah, if everything's turned to a vapor. So um, this is the composition of my lower boiling point liquid, my azeotropic liquid. So the azeotropic composition, that liquid that has the azeotropic composition, actually behaves as a pure liquid. Think about it. Let's come over here. This is pure liquid A. And if I just heat pure liquid A, I'll hit the boiling point of pure A, and then everything turns to vapor. There's none of this two-phase region going on, right? Yeah, there's nothing to separate because it's pure A. And so look here, when I at the azeotropic composition and I'm heating up and I get to this point, this is the point where it turns to vapor. And so what's cool is that if I'm boiling this, my vapor above an azeotrope is the same composition. See, there's no tie lines, it's just a point with pinched down. The vapor composition is exactly equal to the liquid composition. Yeah. Whereas everywhere else, everywhere else except for this composition, the azeotrope, and of course my two pures, everywhere else, the vapor is richer in the more volatile component. You don't believe me? We did that one. Let's try this one. Let's land here at this composition. Let's heat it up, heat it up, heat it up, heat it up. Ah, at this temperature, I'm getting my first drop of vapor. Tie line over to the vapor line and drop it down, and it's this composition. So at this composition of the liquid, I have this composition of the vapor, and I see that it is indeed richer in the lower boiling point liquid of these two. 
Okay, and that brings me to the principle of distillation. Can we map a distillation? Oh, why don't we make that its own? Yeah, why don't we make that its own video?